Hi there. This is Kat, the Christian Baker. Tonight I'm going to make two different scone recipes. That's right. Um, I'm going to make chocolate for myself and my niece and my nephew for tomorrow. For Resurrection Sunday. And whoever else. And my sister-in-law loves, loves, loves the cranberry orange scones. And my scones are not hard little scones. They're very soft and moist and delicious and I have a wonderful glaze for them. So let's start with the recipe. Now I hacked the recipe. I have half for chocolate, half for the other one. And I would say a half a recipe makes about a good eight scones and they're big. And But I usually for like snack, snacks or for like um, for church, if you have to feed a lot of people, what I usually do is cut them into thirds because they're they're so big and you get at least a good two to three bites out of every third piece so you're going to need three cups of self-rising flour this is for a whole recipe you can half it or keep it one um, three cups of self-rising flour a half a cup of sugar one stick of cold cube butter one cup of buttermilk Actually, it's a little bit more than one cup. You'll just you'll have to test it out because I got this recipe online and you need a lot more than one cup of buttermilk. At least maybe one and a half to two each recipe. A quarter cup of orange juice, one orange zest, half cranberries, cup of cranberries. Um, you can add nuts if you want to. Tonight, I don't think I'm going to be doing that. And um, for my chocolate ones, I'm going to add cocoa powder. Okay. Um, this is Michelle Williams, uh, Heart to Yours. Get used just maybe a little bit more. There we go. So maybe that was two tablespoons instead of just one heaping. There we go. If you're gonna make something that has chocolate in it, go for it. Okay. That's all. I'm gonna take this and take some of this out because at the end you're going to need something to roll this batch in, okay? That's it, right there. And then um, the sugar. We'll do about half for each. And I love this cup by uh, Martha Stewart, I believe, because it has like a line in the middle. So you can do half a cup or quarter cup for that one. It's pretty cool. And then we're going to do um, a half a stick of butter for each, maybe a little bit less for the chocolate. So maybe I'll do this. For the flour bun and this, and it just rolled right onto the counter, didn't it? Well, it wouldn't that be a first time, would it? So you're going to need a pastry blender pastry blender. I'll start with the chocolate first. And you're just going to cut in. Now if you want, you can use your KitchenAid. I don't use mine today because um, I don't like the, the scraper of this on metal. So now I've moved to the other bowl. And I'm going to cut this butter in. I don't know about you, but I just love, love baking. I love creating new and wonderful things for people. It just makes me happy. And of course, partaking of the food sometimes. It's not always that bad, huh? <laughs> so I'm done with each of these. 
I'm going to put the chocolate off to the side for a minute and I'm just going to work on this one. Okay. So after we put in the flour, the sugar, and the butter, we're going to put in I believe the cranberries, the orange juice, and the, and the zest, and the orange zest. And then we're going to put in the buttermilk and then stir. I believe. <laughs> it's been a while for this one, so I'm kind of winging it. But it doesn't matter which way you do it. I think that the recipe is going to end up to be the same anyways. I have cranberries right now if they're not in season. What I usually do when around October, November, when they are in season, just get a few bags and freeze them. Okay, and then um, I already kind of washed this. I already washed this fully, and I'm um, just gonna put a lot of that zest in there. I don't know how much zest. Maybe about half of a big orange, or if it's a small nectarine, I would do a small one. But you're gonna really want to taste it. Now, if you don't like orange, by all means, put lemon in there. Lemon is another great citrus flavor for scones. Just really great. And um, I made blueberry um, muffins. There's a video for that. And I put just a little bit of lemon citrus in there because it is just really, really wonderful. Now, that is a lot of uh, zest. I think um, I'm going to keep it right there. This orange back to the side. And then here comes the buttermilk. Um, usually I just get whatever's on sale, but their due date was um, crazy. This is May 6th. This will keep for a while. I might have to spend a couple extra dollars and not get the $1.99 one, but the better for it. And it's supposed to smell sour. Okay, you just pour some in there, very slowly, very little at a time. And you just kind of fold gently. So between that buttermilk and that orange juice, it should come together pretty quickly. It's not called baking. You don't put a little hard work into it. You know, you gotta put a little bit of hard work into it. Usually I don't want, want to work it very much because I don't want it to become hard, but you have to get that. And then you just sit here and pray, pray over it. <laughs> Especially if you're serving it. So just give me a second. I'm going to pray over this. and Okay. And you have no idea how much is in there because of this recipe. So just pour a little bit. And stir a little bit. And pour a little bit. And keep on going like it. Now this is, see, it's getting very nice and tacky. And it's starting to move around the bowl. That is really what you want. I'm just not going to mess with it anymore. Let me just take a minute to move things around and clean up and I'll be right back. Obviously you use the same kind of flour that you use for the recipe. I think that is good there. And spread it around. Take some. Okay, we're going to take the whole thing, oh that was a one swift, thing there. <laughs> I was so impressed by that, it usually kind of comes out in chunks or pieces, but if you got a good spoon, you got to go a long way. So all I'm going to do is take the flour and flour the whole thing. 
And if you need more, don't be shy and going back into your, your bag or your canister or whatever. And as you add more flour, you're just kind of take both hands and you're going to round it out. Now, a lot of flour here. You need a lot of flour here. I'm going to round it out. Just keep on rounding. And as a pop comes up while you round it, you're going to just push it down. Okay, and you're going to round it out again. Maybe turn it around on the counter maybe about three, four times. And after you um, round it out the twice, second time, you can tape it, take it. I can talk, can I? You're going to take it and you're going to flip it over. Okay, you're going to round it out again. And all the excess flour, you want out of the way now. All the excess, it just bye bye. <laughs> you're gonna take this and you're gonna push it down. Just leave it as it is. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your knife, okay, and you're gonna put it in your excess flour that you have in the corner. Kind of like the way you do cookie cutters when you're doing cutouts, right? So you're just going to take it and then you're going to cut it in half. Clear through. Put that knife back in the flour. And you're going to cut it in half. Again. Okay. Put your knife back through. You're going to cut like a pizza between the slices. Okay, a little bit more flour and cut it a third time all the way through. Okay. And you're going to have your knife assist. Pick it up. and put it on your cookie sheet. Now, if you think that these are big now, <laughs> can't wait to the size that they're gonna be. Thought you can just pick them up one by one. I wanna shake a little bit of flour off. These are so scrumptious. And each and every one of these you cut into thirds because they are that. large and this particular cookie sheet I got at Macy's if you'd like to know um, on Black Friday a couple years ago and I usually kind of um, alternate like right here that way they have um, enough time and enough space to bake. One. Okay, so after that whole ordeal, let's do it again. <laughs> this time with the chocolate. The chocolate looks really good. Okay, so one scone set down, one to go. Got chocolate. I'm looking kind of sassy today. <laughs> I'm looking really good today. I like it. I like it. Plus, I'm looking good. Okay. <laughs> um, here are the scones. Come on down. Remember that cup of mixture that I told you to put to the side? I'll take it back out. And you're going to put it on your counter like the flour. Because there's nothing worse than putting chocolate scone mix onto just white cakey flour and have it kind of ruined. So I already buttered my second pan and here we go. Just pull a little of that out, kind of sprinkle it around. We got that chocolate, got that flour. I love that this mix right here is very tacky and very smooth and it's going to be very light and airy and just really, really, really good. I know I have a lot of dishes tonight, but it is so worth it. OK. 
Okay. You want to get all the rest of this stuff off. You know, just like if you're making brownies. You don't want to leave any of it. You know, you just want to get all of that goodness in there. You're going to take some of the mixture and sprinkle it on top. And we're going to do the same thing. Just cover all the tacky parts. But obviously you don't want to do too much. It's okay. It's not a baby. You're not going to hurt it. See, that's why you save that because, and I used all of it up, it was like maybe half a cup. So you're going to round it out. Take it and push it down a little bit. Scoop it up and round it out again. Take it, flip it, round it out. Okay, like before, take all the excess flour that you thought you needed and you didn't and move this back on over. I'm just going to round it out one more time and push it down nicely. Take that knife, stick it in that flour cocoa mixture, and uh, let me push this down just a little bit more. Got to cut it in half. Need that mixture again. Cut it in half again. Cut it and push them together. Cut them in half. Like a pizza. And this one is going to be so, so, oh my gosh, so moist and delectable. Really is. Just take your fingers, shake it just a little bit, and put it on there. And that's all there is to it. Make sure to cup the, the bottom and the top, just so that way you don't lose it, kind of like this one lost it. Just take it and tuck it in the bottom. There we go. I actually want a chocolate one night and I thought of, ah, oh, I have cocoa powder, let's just make a chocolate scone. So I actually, for me, I invented this chocolate scone. About any other chocolate scones, but I invented this one. Okay, so the scones are done. And now it's time to focus on the glaze. Um, three simple ingredients that you probably have in your house. Powdered sugar. Okay, four, four ingredients. Milk, whatever kind you got. A little um, vanilla extract and some salt, table salt. Come on down, yet again. Okie dokie. So, I usually just don't, I don't measure, I just measure what I want. There's no recipe for this, just measure what you want and put in the ingredients to match it. I usually put it in at least a cup and a half of vanilla extract. Um, here's a little helpful hint for butter. Um, I went to Aldi's yesterday and butter was $1.99 for a pack for four sticks. I thought that was pretty cool. Instead of at Walmart $5 for a whole four stick thing. Okay, add a little, just a little bit of milk at a time. Nice glaze here. You can either drizzle them just like that. You can just I like the drizzle. Kind of makes them look a little bit more festive. Them really nice with some good, some good glaze. Okay, I think that one's done. Gotta switch it out. These don't. These look wonderful, don't they? These just look beautiful. These look a little to be desired, but they taste really, really nice. And that glaze on top of them, oh yeah. 
Oh. I love, I don't know why, but I always love the, the look of chocolate. And just white, like white chocolate, like dark chocolate, white chocolate, or just black and white. I don't know why. It's like a nice contrast. Get really fancy and just do that a little bit. As long as you don't get any on yourself. So I clearly made a little bit too much. I don't know what I'd use it for. The music has, seems to have gone off. The kids will surely get a sugar rush with this one. Okay, that's enough. So, let me see. Let me grab one that's, that looks really nice and decadent. This one looks just really so thank you so much for sharing my recipes with me and as always please subscribe and like and share and all those good things um god bless you guys and happy resurrection day tomorrow and um love you bye